about uh, 11 years ago, uh, I came out with a white paper called Is MBIA AAA, where I questioned the AAA rating of a company called MBIA. I disclosed on page one of that report that I had shorted the stock and bought CDS, a kind of an uh, insurance product betting on the company's uh, credit deterioration, and uh, caused a bit of a stir with this paper. Uh, the company did not like the paper, uh, and they, as the largest guarantor of New York State and city bonds, decided they wanted to get back at me, and they called up Elliot Spitzer, who was the then presiding attorney general in New York, and said, look, there's an evil guy saying that we don't deserve our AAA rating, and you know, Moody's and S&P say we're AAA, who's this guy? And uh, Moody's and S&P would later lose some credibility after this. But the, this was a 150 to 1 levered company. Uh, it was guaranteeing a, a whole sort of very risky subprime CDO, CDO squared, CDO cube, and so on and so forth. And it was insolvent uh, based on the exposures. And a, a good analyst digging deeply could determine that. Um, and I came public with this. And I was largely ignored. And I kept at it because I'm a persistent guy. And I made a series of presentations. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I remember some of the names of them. But anyway, so I made a series of presentations. And no one was really paying attention. The stock was 73. The, the credit, the insurance just kept getting cheaper and cheaper, meaning no one believed that we were right. And one day at my last presentation, I said, oh, by the way, no one ever believes me on this one. They say, well, you're short, so how can we believe you? Because you're going to profit if it declines. So I said at, at a conference, I said, OK, I hereby commit to give away 100% of any personal profit I make from this investment. That, was, that day was the high for the stock. And it went from 73 to $3 a share. And the credit protection went from 13 basis points to 2,500. We made a billion, six or seven hundred million dollars. I personally made 150 million dollars. And the 150 million dollars uh, seeded uh, was really the, maybe the second or third uh, grant, but the big grant that created the Pershing Square Foundation. So the Oxford uh, program is an indirect beneficiary of the failure of MBIA. Thank um. you. <laughs> the failure of the financial system actually has a yeah. silver lining. I love that. <laughs> So uh, the problem with short selling is it's something that, even though it's perfectly legal, it's something that people have a degree of discomfort with. You know, it's almost perceived as un-American to bet against a company. And we, by the way, only do it in very rare circumstances, and generally only when we believe when it's good for America or good for the world for the company to disappear. And so uh, in, th in this case, you had a company that was assuming more and more credit risk and had only a tiny capital. They had $5 billion of capital and a trillion dollars worth of obligations they were guaranteeing. And because they were AAA rated, uh, banks and other institutions were not holding capital against these exposures because regulators say if it's AAA rated, you don't need to hold capital. So this was creating, in fact, in my testimony to the SEC, and if you actually, there's a book called Confidence Game, which is about my battle with the company. And if you go to the Confidence Game website, all of my transcripts of testimony to the SEC and the Attorney General, actually online, you can read them. And in there, and this is early 2003 time frame, I said there's going to be a credit crisis if you don't shut this company down. No one, no one paid attention. Anyway, um, so. Uh, I came across a company. Anyway, so the, I think the giving away of the, the, the profits uh, made people say, look, maybe this guy actually believes what he's saying. People paid a little more attention, and, and I think that helped. Um, and it's probably going to give the money away anyway, so uh, uh, it's easy to give away when you don't have it. After you receive the $150 million, then it's really, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the second time round of consequence is a company called Herbalife. And uh, Herbalife is a company that's reportedly in the nutrition business. They sell protein powder shakes, they sell vitamins, they sell uh, uh, herbal tea, uh, they sell uh, some nitric acid type uh, things that supposedly are good for your heart. These are all commodity products. Uh, they're made by five, six, ten different manufacturers. You can buy them at your local pharmacy, you can buy them at your local GNC if they have that here. You can buy them at your local uh, supermarket. But the price you pay at your supermarket is about a quarter to a third of the price you pay for the Herbalife product. So who in their right mind would buy this overpriced stuff? Uh, and uh, the Herbalife's number one product is called Formula One. You know, no one's ever heard of Formula One other than the race. Uh, and it competes with a product called SlimFast, which I guess many people in the room may have heard of. It's a product made by Unilever. SlimFast sells 100 million, 150 million a year. Herbalife ostensibly sells 2 billion of the same product. Now, How is it that SlimFast sales have been coming down every year and the Herbalife product has been growing? It's sold what the, by what they call a direct selling model. And the way that works is, your name is? Marianne. Marianne. So Marianne comes to me and she says, Bill, don't I look terrific? I've been losing weight. I've got this product I've been using. And I said, wow, you look fantastic. Um, and she said, would you like to try it? I said, sure. A friend approaches me you know, and says, hey. And so you try it. And then uh, she says, hey, would you like to make a little money on the side? In, a, in this economy, who wouldn't want to make a little money on the side? And 
she convinces me to become an Herbalife distributor. And she tells me that if I sign up five friends, and each of them sign up five friends, and each of them sign up five friends, pretty soon I'll be collecting royalties, and I can retire rich, or if I'm less ambitious, I can make some little money on the side. And as a unsophisticated, unemployed, uh, low-income person, which is the target audience uh, for Herbalife, this kind of pitch from someone I trust sounds appealing. And the unfortunate thing is that something in order of 99% of the people lose money. Uh, there are about 50 that make 5 or 10 million a year. There are about 1,000 that make a few hundred thousand a year. And the other 3.6 million lose, you know, anywhere between $300 and three, eight, ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. And it's really a money transfer scheme. It's a pyramid scheme. It's like a chain letter. When you got one when you were a kid, you know, send a dime to the following uh, 11 people on the mailing list, and then in three weeks you'll have $1,000. Um, if you think about what a Ponzi scheme is, it's a money transfer scheme without a product. A pyramid scheme is a money transfer scheme with a product. And they do smart things like put the Herbalife uh, logo on uh, football jerseys of famous soccer stars, and they back various teams. That's very appealing to the Hispanic community, which is actually the target audience that they've been very successful with. Um, now, unfortunately, or fortunately, pyramid schemes are illegal. Um, now, here's a pyramid scheme. It's got a $7 billion plus market cap. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange. It's been in existence for 33 years. How is it possible? that this company could be a pyramid scheme? The answer is, it is. And in fact, they've used their tenure as a public company and the New York Stock Exchange listing and the imprimatur of Nobel, a Nobel laureate they paid $15 million to to serve as representatives of the company and lax regulatory regime in the US to allow this pyramid scheme to grow to an enormous size. And the problem with pyramid schemes is they run out of victims and they inevitably com collapse. And uh, the, I can actually prove to the audience very quickly that this is a pyramid scheme, and I'll, I'll do that by asking you a question. So Herbalife entered the UK in 1983, 30 years ago, okay? Um, Pepsi has been in the UK for a longer period of time, but after 30 years, Pepsi had a good quarter last quarter, and they grew their sales at 3% in the UK. What do you think Herbalife grew their sales last quarter in the UK at? Let's, let's have a guess in the audience. Raise your hand. It's no risk of being wrong. Yes, 1%, one. One okay, someone else? 30. 140%, percent. that's interesting, okay. 20? 30. 30%. Percent. The answer is sales grew 92% last quarter. And how is it possible that, I mean, maybe people are getting fat at an incredible rate here, I mean, <laughs> but, but absent that, um, the reason why it grew very quickly is they found a new immigrant population to go after. And this is a uh, product that where there is a boom as people get recruited, and then when very quickly, when the population gets saturated, saturated it collapses. Right now, they have, they have, you know, the UK business grew enormously and then collapsed, and now it's beginning to grow enormously. I don't, I, it's I maybe the Vietnamese population. Um, you know, I, was, I was with one of my investors and said, you know, I think the women who work cleaning the office are Herbalife distributors, and I met with them. And people are convinced to become Herbalife distributors that you have to buy $3,000 worth of inventory in order to start getting these royalties. And what it is is effectively an inventory loading uh, type scheme. So anyway, the, the very, so that's the, what the business is. Um, we did you know, probably uh, 18 months worth of work before we came public. We hired one of the best law firms in the country, Sullivan and Cromwell, to do, do their own independent evaluation. Um, if I'm going to say publicly a company's a pyramid scheme, I certainly would like the legal backing of one of the top law firms in the country. And both we and Sullivan concluded it was a pyramid scheme. And on December 20th, I made a public presentation. And there's a website called Facts About Herbalife. You can watch the presentation. There's lots of other data there. And so far, so good until Carl Icahn came along and bought 16% of the company, said it was totally wrong, and every, it seems like every day he goes on CNBC and says what a great company it is, and every time he says that, the stock goes up another couple of dollars. And in the meantime, the company's reporting very good financial results. But I'll make a prediction, and I don't know if I'm back here in a year. Maybe we'll it invite you back. Is that can, okay. <laughs> this business will be shut down. Okay, this business will collapse. I can't give you the precise date, but we will have made progress to that, uh, in that direction within 12 months. So that's my prediction to you.